Great summary, and especially I loved your analogy about the brake and accelerator. You know, it's just great. And so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna shift gear a little bit. You know, because you spend a lot of time taking care of patients, seeing melanoma patients and high risk patients with lots of atypical moles. Right. Um, what's your approach? Right. Well, I think the important thing is to get uh, people into the right frame of mind. Um, I've had patients who come in, um, they've had multiple biopsies of benign lesions, atypical nevi, and, and they're tired of getting cut up, you know, so they said, isn't there a better way to do that? And and we use, you know, a combination of, of photography, whether it be total body photography or what's called, people talk about mole mapping, as well as uh, uh, dermoscopy, uh, um, uh, you know, which is this high magnification and of, of individual moles and we can see under the surface and we have a much higher diagnostic accuracy. Uh, so we end up leaving a lot of what I call funny looking, but yet benign moles, you know, on patients and reassuring them that they don't have to worry because, you know, th we have these better tools that we can more accurately uh, diagnose them. But some people come in really anxious. You know, mm -hmm. I have one patient who came in and said, my doctor told me I was a ticking time bomb. You know, I was going to get a melanoma at some point and, and all these moles were ticking time bombs, you know, and I was like, wow, that's like the worst thing you could possibly tell someone, as you know, because, you know, we know from our practice and that of all of our colleagues that, that most of these moles really are just indicators that patients have an increased lifetime risk and that if they do develop a melanoma, it could just come out of normal skin. It's not one of these moles is necessarily going to turn into a melanoma. So so there's no need to prophylactically remove these moles. It doesn't really improve people's uh, chances of getting melanoma later. So um, so it's really trying, my approach is really to try and calm people down. Um, and then at the same time, you know, someone who just sort of happens to come in and quite doesn't realize that they're at an increased risk. So I, I go through their sort of risk profile. I ask them about their family history. I ask if they've done any indoor tanning, you know, if they're very light skin and red hair in particular is a, is a high risk, you know, uh, what I call phenotype, um, uh, you know, to say, you know, probably need to come in a little bit more often, you know, and try to get them to do that and, and, and sometimes try to get them to be more proactive, examine their skin. Um, uh, and, and I'll say one more thing. I see you're about to ask me a question, but uh, <laughs> one thing, one thing, uh, one thing that I've started doing uh, for a long time now, actually, is, um, uh, I give them the card of the practice manager. And I said, if you ever have a spot that you're concerned about and you want to come in, call the practice manager because um, she blocks appointments in my schedule only she can schedule into so we always have the ability to see somebody on an urgent basis and patients are so appreciative of that um and they and they make use of it and they don't abuse it you know they don't just use yeah. it for like a routine visit so uh um so it's really a partnership you know with the patient uh, uh i to... can't i can't agree with you more i mean i think part of the reason perhaps is you now we I introduced you to dr alfred Koff, professor right. of both of us followed this gray man you know that's right all the time and he's he was... really sort of push through the demoscopy, total body photography and That's all right. that stuff. And yeah. he's the guy who actually came up with the ABCDs of melanomas. Yep. And, right. um, you know, one thing I, I really loved your philosophy because I really sort of share the same philosophy, right? And I think one thing you said about the ticking bomb issue, right? And I think I completely agree with you. And a lot of times, you know, a patient get a biopsy, you came back as a typical nevi, dysplastic nevi. I really kind of dislike some of the explanation that physicians give to the patient. They call it pre-melanoma, which is, right. yeah, because you they, they make patients feel like, oh, you know, this is a, this thing is really going to turn into a melanoma. You got to remove right. it. But in reality is that's really perhaps not the case. Right, exactly. I mean, uh, uh you know, it's, it's um, uh, yeah, two, a couple of issues here. One is, um, the chances of any atypical mole, right? We can look under, we can look at the at the the lesion in the patient, and we can say, yeah, if we remove that, chances are the pathologist would call it an atypical mole. Yeah. But what's actually the chance of one of those turning into melanoma? It's probably less than one in a thousand. I mean, there's this whole paper from Henson Sow, which I don't know if it was estimating dysplastic nevi or nevi in general, but you know, it was kind of a back of the envelope calculation saying it's less than one in a thousand chance that a given mole is going to turn into a melanoma. Um, so one of my fellows. 
uh, once said to me, well, gee, if you don't think they're pre-melanoma, why do we follow these patients so carefully? You know, why do we do all this, this imaging and stuff like that? I said, it's really not that we think they're going to turn into melanoma. It's we don't want to miss a melanoma that's masquerading as an atypical mole, right? So we look at it, we say, oh, it looks like an atypical mole. Then we put our dermatoscope on it. It's like, oh, hang on. This is not what I expected. This looks a little bit more worrisome. It's got more stuff going on there. You know, these are the ones I need to remove. Whereas the other ones I look at, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that's a, I like to tell patients, oh, yes, that's that looks, um, that's so benign looking. I could put it in the in the textbook, in the benign chapter. So uh, but there is, uh, you mentioned something else is really interesting to answer your fellow's question. Why do we yeah. follow them, right? And a couple of things. One is those the individuals with lots and lots of atypical nevi and their risk of developing melanoma is much, much higher. You can that's have right. a novo, a new melanoma arising. That, that's exactly. one reason, right? A second right. reason is that, we sometimes don't really know the biological behavior of some of those moles, right? Because at times that's the reason you follow them is, and you may not be able to see anything at this moment. Right. This is a melanoma lesion, but right. down the road, the mole can change. Yeah. But we're yeah, just sure. not good enough at this point to know which one of the hundreds on the person's body. Right. Do so. Right. And of course we don't know. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so there is a chance that, that a melanoma can arise in one of these moles. So we do, we do keep track of them. Um, and the baseline imaging of course is really, really useful. Um, and of course we don't know enough, but the other thing is we don't really know about people's exposure. So we don't really yeah. know if you get a sunburn in an area of yeah. a mole, is that really going to, you know, change a small percentage of them or not, you know, so there's these exposure issues and uh, that we don't know about. So, Right. All good reasons why people with lots of moles should be coming in on a routine basis. And there's something else you said that really, like, you know, really resonate to it. I always tell my patient, you know, this is a partnership, right? And then yeah. I tell them, unfortunately, they're going to be friends with me for, for a long time. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, because I have to trust them knowing that they will come back, right? Yes. I will, I will because if, if, if they are not compliant, they sort of just leave and they don't do the follow up. That's and right. then our methodology of sort of following patients just don't haphazardly biopsy every single one of those lesions is not going to work, right? And exactly. They, and I, it, I do the same. That is that uh, I always tell them if they see anything worrisome, you just call us. We'll try to get them in. 